guys how's it going it is the day after the rain we had crazy rain all throughout like a couple of days usually this is not normal here you know in southern california so i just want to give you guys a little quick lens of what has happened out in the garden and there's plenty for me to do out here today because um well the day's getting you know has been shorter than night now and uh, we're gonna be getting days of rain uh coming up next week show you this oh, this branch here this giant this giant tree collard is like i think eight or even maybe like eight feet nine feet tall but it is on a raised bed so it's actually looking more like a 12 feet tall thing so here it is this has snapped off poor thing this casualty or shall i say victim I'm gonna have to saw this down and see how many cuttings I can get out of that and then prop this up. I'm not exactly sure how I would be uh, propping it up yet. It all depends if I can stake it to the ground, you know, uh, deep enough into the raised bed, then I could prop it up that way. Otherwise, I might actually have to mount it on the concrete or the cinder block wall. So uh, I guess won't know until I start working on it. And then let me show you guys. Uh, tip over here and then right above there the poor acerilla this is my acerilla cherry and part of the branch is sort of being caught a little bit underneath this tree collard and thankfully the tree collard's been caught by uh the the tall dragon fruit trellis so i do need to stake it back up and then move this uh sugar snap pea sugar snap pea looking really beautiful on the top the bottom is not looking so hot it is uh it was dying off when we had a you know a week or so of 90 90 90 plus degree weather anyway it is blossoming on the top all right guys let's go check out some of the um this is the worm farm here this is a mini one i've placed in the elevated raised bed i have not made a video on this yet but that is coming soon I'm testing out to see how it goes. So it's been plenty of moisture in here for the past two or two or three weeks or so. Let's take a look at what it looks like. All right, here we go. Let's see what it looks. Oh, hello, wormies. got tired of trying to pound this thing in so I gave in into getting a post driver Wow 
it went down so much deeper than I could ever achieve using a hammer because uh, it's just such a tight space to work with. I also don't have a large hammer and I'm also not strong enough. <laughs> so this driver is really cool. Okay. Hopefully I get this deep enough so that I can pull the tree collar back up. All right, now it is going to be pretty interesting. Fingers crossed, guys. I am going to hope I can pull this uh, tree collar up. How can I get this? Let's see how I can get this shot. Since I need a second hand to pull that tree up, we're just going to move on to the next task here. And that is to put more worms in the worm bin and to feed them. So if you guys are grossed out by worms, be sure to skip over this section. Skip to here, this part of the video. All right, you guys, don't say that I didn't warn you. Let's go play with some wormies. Okay, this is where the worms live. It is under this canopy. Ooh, there's some really nice worms in this bottom one wow I'm getting some really nice casting guys look at that oh there's a hi wormies want to say hi to the camera look at all the wormies say hi you guys okay <laughs> let's get you back in that corner more castings Mom's home, mom's home. I need help, I need help. I'm just gonna move this tray into the other spot. I just picked up some more worms. Got about 2,500 worms in here. Ooh, they're on the bottom, yep. If you guys don't have a worm bin, you can actually make one out of uh, a five gallon bucket. Five gallon buckets are so useful. Like you can do so many things with these things. What's in here is basically a lot of cocoa core and a little bit of perlite and a lot of like roots and leftover cuts from, this is a, the microgreen medium that I'm recycling and feeding the worms. And then I will start topping it off with like some juice pulp, uh, a little bit of food scraps if I kind of like grind it down, and uh, coffee ground. This is all the good stuff. 
ground coffee. I got this at my local coffee. Actually, it's a Beard Papa's. I just kind of layer it up and put some ground coffee in. Um, I'll be juicing later, so I'll just I'll have some food scraps. And that's it. I'm just going to finish this up. Come on, come on. Come on. Country, we're putting it back. So this is the tree collard. It used to not grow like this, but I think the wind has kind of turned it a little bit while it when it was kind of like knocked over. So now, even though we've placed this, moved this back up this position is no longer how it used to be so I need to just give a little more balance to the, tr the, the tree by removing this branch. Hey, tree, I'm sorry you have to go. Make okay. more cuttings out of you. I have been loving. One of my viewers recommended a Japanese pole saw. Thank you because this thing I've been loving so, so, so much. I think it gives me more control to work because it's like a saw as um, when you actually do a pull back motion, which I think gives me more control. Thank you, tree collard. I'm so glad that the rain is giving us a little break so that I can finish up in the garden. Just gotta make sure that you know you get everything pruned properly, stake up in case the wind and too much rain, you know, mix things too heavy and knock over. Prune things to the proper proportion, more balanced so they don't get knocked over by the wind. This is the Pigeon pea, this is my first year growing it, especially in the winter, it's growing amazing. Uh, plant it with the other drought tolerant plants like the wild, I think it's like the Greek oregano and the caper bush. So I didn't know what to expect having days of rain. It's really unusual for Southern California. So just, I don't wanna risk it having root rot. So for those of you guys who have pets, you know this is an e-collar. Wrapped it up like this to prevent too much rain going into it. And then the dragon fruit trellis right back here. The dragon fruit trellis is uh, wrapped with a, it's just a used uh, shower curtain. Keep it, you know, from in case of root rotting or just setting in too much uh, water soaking in the winter in a pretty large container. And then finally, I'm so happy that I was able to uh, get the banana, this is the apple banana. I'm so glad that I'm finally able to make a home for it in this large container. As you know, bananas can get pretty wide on the base. And this one I got from uh, Green Zebra Gardening. So glad that I was able to make this space for it. This place had a lot of grass jelly grown all over. I mean, the grass jelly just grows pretty wild out here once they get established. I love this vine, but I do have to make sure that I prune it enough to make space for other plants. And then this one, it's being so large, the container is sitting on some wheels also. I love making everything movable in this small space. Finally, finally, this is kind of a little bummer, but uh, yeah, I wanted to put some caster wheels on the elevated raised bed. I got this raised bed used. So uh, especially when the time I didn't even know how to do anything with wood. So. I was told that this is red wood. It didn't look so much like red wood according to like some research. However, this is a used bed. So I thought maybe the, the wood would change over time. The legs of the bed had direct contact with the ground for a really long time. So I think it's either rotting a little bit or that it's the wood has been softer because of all the moisture. So when we put in the, the casters, the finally the very last one did not screw on once we lifted the the planter up the wheel kept falling down so i screwed it back on again it fell off again 
So I'll just have to wait for this wet season to pass and then see if I can screw it on again. Um, hopefully that would work, you know, with the wood being more dry. Otherwise, I would just have to saw away part of the leg, put a new uh, two by four on and then put the final caster wheel on. So right now, the last one here is just sitting on a couple of bricks. <laughs> I will complete this, I guess, in the springtime. Anyway, you guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys do to get ready for your, the rain or the rainstorm or any kind of crazy weather that keeps you out of the garden. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification button for updates. If you guys are looking for some plants and seeds, be sure to go check out my website. I will leave the link in the description box down below. Thank you, you guys. Stay safe. Stay warm. Happy holidays. I shall see you right back here in the next video. Bye.